Well, I owe someone a $50 gift card, so let's pick the winner. As you can see, we had over 2,100, almost 2,200 people enter. Let's draw the winner. There we go, Santana Rodriguez in Edinburgh, Texas. Congratulations, I will be sending you an email and you are entry number 1019, so you are the winner, congratulations. I will pick a winner at the end of the month for the $100 gift card for sending something to my P.O. box, so that information is in the description below. So here I am at the P.O. box and I got all sorts of stuff for the giveaway. So Michael from PA, uh, old car auto sales in, uh, where the hell is that? Is that uh, NB, that might be Canada. Uh, Chase, screw you Chase. Uh, Ray Johnson from Jeffersonville, Indiana, local guy. And uh, Nick from Maryland. We're gonna open these up at the end of the video and you guys are all entered into the gift card giveaway. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Behind me, the brand new 2019 Silverado Trail Boss Edition. Just like this video says, from a Chevy salesperson, I'm gonna share with you the five things I actually do hate about this truck. So since we've gotten this truck in, these trucks I guess, because uh, we've gotten about 13 or 14 of them in stock now. Um, uh, I have done nothing but be all over this vehicle. So, um, you know, I'm well known um, on the internet for Chevrolet sales. So uh, the reason I'm well known is because uh, our industry, the automotive industry, is full of mediocre salespeople. Mediocre salespeople come to a dealership and they sit around and wait for the next customer or they sit around and wait for their phone to ring uh, For the internet sales department to call them and say hey, we set an appointment for you Well, I've never been that way. I've always been um, on the cutting edge and on the front circle of everything with the automotive sector And the biggest thing I think that sells vehicles is product knowledge. Well when the 2014 Corvette came out in the 2013 year um, you know I had done several videos and kind of started this new YouTube channel back then. And a lot of people started calling me because they were like, yeah, I called this dealer, I called this dealer. They have no idea what they're doing. But I started Googling things and you popped up and you seem like you know what you're doing. So uh, my product knowledge is finally paying off and uh, that I can showcase people what I actually do for a living, that I do it ethically, and most importantly, uh, I am all in. I sit here and live and breathe the car business and set and live and breathe uh, the knowing the product knowledge. So uh, the last week or so that we've had these trucks in stock, I literally, I love the two inch lift kit because I literally, we have a black one on the showroom floor and I literally have just laid on the floor underneath this car, underneath this truck, and just looked at everything. It's amazing underneath. And I didn't have to put it on a lift. I didn't have to get help. I didn't have to write a repair order to put it on a lift for insurance purposes, all that stuff. So uh, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on your bell notifications and smash that thumbs up. If we hit 5,000 likes on this video, I will do more videos of showing you uh, the bad things on this. But until then, Let's move on to the five things I hate about the brand new Silverado. So I'm gonna start right here up at the front. Man, aluminum. Aluminum is a sissy metal. Ever since Ford came out with aluminum, I hate it. I make fun of the truck. It's expensive to repair. Body shops don't like it. Paintless dent repair guys don't like it. It takes a lot of specialty equipment to repair aluminum. So I'm not a big fan that we're using aluminum on the truck. Um, you know, for years, uh, people are like, because I've bashed Ford on using the aluminum, the uh, people are like, you're going to eat your words, you're going to eat your words because Chevrolet's going to be all aluminum soon. Well, I knew that wasn't the case. I knew what they were gonna use, which they're just using the hood, the door skin, and the tailgate back here. So um, I hate that they're using aluminum, but it is what it is. And I uh, didn't really eat my words on that because I knew that they're still keeping this nice strong steel. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to reduplicate the uh, tailgate, uh, the toolbox thing uh, down the road. So we'll see what happens with the new bed if that stands up to the marketing that Chevrolet did uh, in the past. And then also, now people are telling me that just in a couple years, it's all gonna be a 
aluminum, which it's not going to be all aluminum. So I hate that they used aluminum uh, on this truck, but uh, at least we used very minimal aluminum. Probably just like you, um, you know, we all have multiple devices. We all have things that we need to plug in. So one thing that I love about this Trail Boss is that we have new technology, USB-C. We have USB. We have 12 volt outlet. We have 120 volt outlet. And then we have USB, USB-C, aux, SD card, all right here. And then when you come to the back of the vehicle, we have another USB-C. We have a USB and we have a 12 volt outlet. So in this truck alone, we have nine power outlets and power resources to use to charge our devices. Now you might be like, Mike, nine outlets? Come on, trust me, I need nine outlets uh, when I'm traveling and doing stuff. So when we go to the bench seat up here, we lose these here and a couple here in the back if we have a bench seat up there or we go down a trim level to like the RST because the RST is right below the Trail Boss. Um, we're losing some power outlets. I don't think um, that's a good thing. I think we need to have a lot of power outlets and a lot of devices because if you have a crew cab like this, you have five people in here. And of course, in the new 2018 Traverse, they don't even have a DVD available up here uh, because they know everybody and their kids are using handheld devices rather than watching DVD or Blu-rays. So to kind of show you what I was talking about, this is a $49,000 LT truck that I'm setting in. So you can see you have USB port, USB-C port, USB port, 12 volt outlet, no 120 volt outlet. So there's no USB ports inside the center console, even though it's covered up with plastic. And then you come back here and what they do is they give you two USB ports only for charging and then a 12 volt outlet. So if you want those extra outlets and whatnot you actually have to spend one thousand four hundred and twenty dollars to get those extra outlets so you only have six outlets inside this truck i almost forgot you can see the big black box you lose that power outlet as well when you do not have the convenience two package like i mentioned earlier that is fourteen hundred dollars When I first saw that we were gonna have dual exhaust on our Silverados, I'm telling you, I was crazy excited. Then when the truck gets here, it sounds like that. I mean, that's a wimpy sound. We should have done so much better on this. And I told you earlier that I've been literally like crawling underneath this video, uh, vehicle uh, for quite a bit. Uh, when it comes out of the headers, it actually flattens out a little bit. And um, so I don't know why that why they're flattening out the exhaust. They do that on the Camaro too, but um, um, you know that they need to do a whole lot better uh, exhaust. So hopefully Borla comes out with a factory uh, exhaust for like a cat back like they have on the current generation trucks uh, because that does sound pretty good. I sell a lot of those Borla exhausts, but uh, so yeah, we definitely need uh, that stepped up in the exhaust world. But also if we do a Borla exhaust, we can't take those tips away. I like those tips. Those tips are really awesome. The next thing I don't really like about the Silverado is the new dash layout. I think this looks very, very cheap. I think it looks old. I don't think it looks like new technology. And I also go along with that. I don't like this wheel. We should have buttons here with a button in the middle to reset it. Uh, not a silly wheel. This is, again is old technology. This is something that Volkswagens and Audis have done for a long time. Uh, I think this is confusing that we have a home screen with the zero mile per hour and distance to empty. Uh, and then we have to come through here like this. This looks very, very old. This doesn't look something new. Um, and you know, you just, it just looks old. And it goes along with the radio as well. This is a brand new radio, brand new layout radio. Um, they have three different radios for the 2019 Silverado. So not only is it confusing for a salesperson to kind of memorize all of this stuff on here. Remember I talked about mediocre salespeople? So you're gonna run into people who have no idea what these radios do, no idea that there's three different radios, um, and then this is the middle option of the radio. And I think that, uh, uh, again, these right here uh, could be a little bit clearer, a little bit crisper, and a whole lot nicer picture. If you followed me for any period of time, uh, you probably already know what this is and it's the absolute worthless thing and we can thank our lovely government which i'm not a political person in any way shape or form but this is 100 government bs and that is auto stop 
technology. Auto stop is absolutely worthless. This is the first vehicle that we actually do have auto stop off feature. So the Malibu, the Cruze, the Equinox, the Traverse, all those vehicles out there, not the Corvette, uh, all those vehicles out there have auto stop, but you can't shut it off. Listen, it's my money. If I'm spending $9,000 for a Chevy Spark or I'm spending $50,000 for a Chevy High Country Traverse, I should have the choice of what I get if as far as features of auto stop not. If somebody wants auto stop, charge a couple hundred bucks for it. Don't make it automatic. I hate the feature. Um, from what I understand, you can tune out that uh, feature in several vehicles. I've never done it yet. I've asked around quite a bit, but typically a tune uh, of your vehicle is where it is. So 99.9% .9 of the people are not gonna tune their Chevy Malibu, not gonna tune their Chevy Traverse, stuff like that. Uh, it's worthless technology, and um, but it's a government thing. So the good news is, is that they do use the starter, obviously, to start the vehicle every time, but they've doubled the capacity of the starter. So you probably won't see anything like that go bad in the future. Um, but again, um, who knows what's also available uh, in that stop-start feature, uh, what technology, what could go wrong, what sensors, stuff like that for longevity down the road of what's going to cost you as a consumer uh, to uh, repair down the road. I mean, come on now. You guys know I'm a salesman. I live, I make the money off of selling you a vehicle. So what salesperson in the world would sit here and make a video and tell you and bash their own product? Well, listen, I just found five things that I hate. It's not like I dislike the vehicle. I love the Silverado. It's awesome. But before you go, Stick with me, smash that thumbs up, and let me show you a few things that I love about this vehicle, and you will love it too when you purchase it. And I'm gonna to touch on a few things that people are saying over and over and over again in the comment section, over and over and over on my Snapchat, over and over and over on my Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so, uh, but I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I think they're a little off, and hopefully it'll change your mind too. So one thing a lot of people are saying is it's cheap plastic. There is a lot of plastic in here, but I don't know if it's really cheap. Every car manufacturer out there who mass produces cars, if it's Honda, Toyota, Ford, us, whoever, they all use plastic. But let me point out a couple of things. So when you get into the vehicle, you're kind of looking at it how you would get into this vehicle right there. One of your focal points is gonna be right here on the steering wheel. So if you look, really nice brushed aluminum, not really brushed aluminum, it's a painted uh, a painted aluminum look. Uh, really, really awesome, I like that. Um, then also around the controls here is this is actually like a leather or synthetic leather or a leatherette or whatnot. This is actually something that looks really nice, has some stitching on it, looks really good. Those are, I think, when you hop in the car, your two main focal points there. If you come over to the door, you've got some focal points here, and it's really the same stuff. This is not cheap plastic up here. This is really good. This is plastic. This is like a leatherette. Got this wood trim. Now my wife back here, where's she at? Hey, get out of the cars. She doesn't like this wood trim. I've had a lot of people say that. Uh, it's just not enough in there. I get that, but it is cool, and it breaks up the car so it's not plastic there. Another focal point on here is they put the sill plate in here. It's kind of rather small. It'd be awesome if it went all the way back, but it's probably an engineering thing. Um, so that's cool. It breaks up the plastic there. And then up here is all plastic, but again, around the radio here, this is uh, that same leatherette, leather, whatever you want to call it, uh, up there. And there is a little bit of cup holder up here, so you can put your uh, cup holder, a, a little holder up here so this way you can put like a cell phone up there or whatever the case may be but uh, this is all plastic but that's pretty normal in uh in the automotive industry so you know i sell a lot of vehicles and i sell a lot of o2s o3s o4s 99 silverados and the number one question that anybody calls me and i usually bring it up too how much rust is on the vehicle, right? So we know we have rust issues. We have rust issues down here. We have rust issues up here. We've had rust issues up here on those older model Silverados. Well, when the 14 model came out, they did this down here. And this is, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this is all roughed up. And I really do believe that this is going to uh, end any of those rust problems. I, don't know the engineering background to it. Um, a lot of my paint guys who do it say it's kind of hard to repaint that and rough it up, but I guess it just doesn't allow things to stick because it doesn't have a smooth surface. Someone asked me on some social media, I don't know if it was YouTube, I don't know where it was at, but they asked me if you could put this two inch lift kit on a high country, or actually I think they asked me if you could get a Trail Boss High Country or a Trail Boss um, uh, LTZ. I'm like, no, you know, the Trail Boss is the only one with the lift kit, the Trail Boss Custom, um, but I was doing 
some research and I found that Chevrolet has a two inch lift kit. I do believe it's a two inch lift kit. I'm still doing a little bit more research, but if you buy a high country, if you buy an LTZ, if you buy just a regular LT, um, you can actually spend a couple thousand bucks and get this two inch lift kit. Again, I know people are gonna be like Steeler ships and high markup, blah, blah, blah. I'm just quoting GM prices. That's all I can do. I'm, I'm at liberty with the manufacturer. It's not like I'm making this stuff up, making the prices up. You can go to any GM dealership and get this. And the likelihood of me selling you one of these things that I price on is extremely low. So you can put this two inch lift kit, uh, it looks like on an LTZ or just a regular LT or an RST or high country, uh, stuff like that down the future. I will do a video cause I'm trying to get the dealership to uh, do a uh, lifted one uh, for YouTube. I think the push button tailgate back here is really awesome. Now that truck is locked and I had the key fob on me. So uh, so that's kind of nice that uh, the, do the door locks automatically. It puts it down. And one advantage of the aluminum, I showed this in my last video, I mean, one finger to close that thing. That is pretty awesome, extremely light. And I'll tell you, since I did that last video, oh my gosh, the amount of people who follow me here in Louisville, that is so cool. Jeffersonville, Indiana, I've had someone come over here. I've had so many people walk into the dealership and want to just meet me. That is really cool. Um, so it's really awesome that I have a lot of people looking uh, in Louisville for this truck. So I've had a lot of people come in here and a lot of people, when they see it in person, they're like, you know what? It doesn't look as bad as it does in pictures. And I agree, and I've said that before in the past, is uh, don't judge a book by its cover. It's a good old analogy, um, stuff like that. So uh, I really do love the look of the brand new 2019 Silverado. I like the front end. When you get up to it really, really close, you can kind of see the lines of it. You know, if you look up here, um, the functional vents, I'm still trying to figure out what those do and what the purpose of that is. Some type of aerodynamics, if you look this comes way back in here and it dives in really, really sharp. So uh, some type of aerodynamics to uh, cut the wind. And when you get up here again, really, really close, you can see these little funnels, right? This has got to be air funnels for some reason, a little air funnel, and this raises up too. So you can see this gets fatter up here to move that wind out away from the vehicle. So that's kind of interesting. Curvature right here. So that's really interesting in there. So I really do like this look. I think it's really unique uh, of how they did it. And there's some things back here of the way the light works and all that stuff. But those vents are functional as you can see through them right there. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. Say hi. All right, guys. So it's that time the cat wants to be involved. This is my cat, Smokey's Himalayan, for mail time. So I want to tell everyone thanks in advance for sending me something. So everybody in this uh, area here, as the cat is up on the table once again, uh, is entered into the hundred dollar giveaway so the very first cat get off the table the dog's chasing the cat so the very first letter comes from ray here in jeffersonville indiana oh he sent me some chevy dude stickers nice those are cool we may have to talk about this ray i like these i like these these are this is from ray i guess i should show them the camera very cool really cool stuff I've been thinking about stuff like this as the cat is getting tortured. Uh, love the channel. Uh, didn't know your favorite color. So here is a mixture, Ray. So those are awesome. I'll have to do something with those. Thanks, Ray. And then this one is from Old Car Auto Sales. And I think this is Oak Bay NB, which would be New Brunswick, Canada, right? So. This is, just dropping a line to say, hey, from St. Stephen, New Brunswick, Canada. Yes, I got it right, know my geography. Uh, thanks for the crazy content. Great to see another salesman vlogging in the old YouTube. I have enclosed a couple stickers for the toolbox. An old car guy with the cat on the table again uh, from my YouTube channel and a dealership decal from my used car lot. With any luck, I can get a shout out to help build my channel as well as an entry into the $100 Visa gift card drawing. Good luck, I reach 100K subs by the end of the year. So that is Jason, AKA Old Car Guy on Instagram, it's Old Car Guy, O-L-D-E-C-A-R-R -R Auto Guy. I'll have that right there on the screen for you. So that is his dealership. And this is his Instagram and YouTube stuff. So thanks guys. Thanks man, I appreciate it. 
Next one is from Michael Newman. Newman, to cut this one open. Brought the old razor blade. Hopefully I don't cut anything in it. Uh, Michael Newman from Perkaski, Pennsylvania. Probably pronounced that wrong. It is heavy. Glad there's no nothing ticking in it. Uh, Chevy dude, please give this to your son, and I wish him a safe cheer in law uh, cheer. Uh, in a oh, career in law enforcement. Sorry, I met, read that wrong. Michael Michael Newman, um, cat, get off of the table. Um, hey, this is awesome. I love this. Absolutely love this. Michael Newman, uh, probably back in the blue and uh, thin blue line with the St. Michael thing. So I will give that to him. He's downstairs, uh, probably playing Fortnite, uh, but he's downstairs and I'll give that to him. Uh, so this next one is from Thomas Hardy, Eagle Lake, Florida. Thank you so much. And we got Mr. Mike. First one to say congrats on the YouTube channel. You're killing it and I love watching him to see. Uh, you seem like a really stand up person, hell of a salesman and awesome family man. Just wanted to give you a shout out and say, if you ever in Central Florida area, hit me up. If you uh, wanna go on an airboat ride, take oh i would love an airboat ride i have thought about doing that uh for quite a while so thomas is an independent dealer for amsoil amsoil is a great synthetics uh for oil and everything like that so uh top off synthetics.com so check out thomas harvey thanks man i really appreciate it the letter we got a envelope here this is from nick in earlville maryland Pray to God I don't cut whatever's in here. Once again. Ooh, FOP. Oh man, this would have been really nice the other day. Would it not have been nice the other day? An FOP plate or an FOP? That would have been really nice uh, because I got pulled over and uh, that video is gonna be coming up. So um, Nick is uh, YouTube is internet police. Hey, there's something a little special gift contest. I can't read now. Uh, here's a little something for the gift card contest. And close are two packages from the police department I work for in Chester Police Department in PA, as well as fraternal order, fraternal order of police members emblem. This particular emblems are difficult to come by for even police officers themselves because you must be an administrative officer of your department's local FOP lodge. Uh, I keep a smaller version of the emblem on my license plate and my wife has the exact emblem on her car driver's side window. This has gotten her out of a few speeding tickets. See, I told you, I needed this a week ago. Um, I put I put that on my uh, Facebook. So, um, so uh, they obviously aren't illegal to have or anything, but these emblems are supposed to be given out to police officers and sometimes immediate family members of police officers. So if you do use it, it ever gets stopped and questioned about it, you can always tell them a family member who's a police officer gave it to you, perhaps your son soon enough, or my uncle Nick from Maryland. Uh, thanks for all your blue support. Thanks for all your blue support. Yep, I read that right. Love your videos and keep them coming. Perhaps in a few years, I'll get a, buy a vehicle from you. Um, Come on, Mike, lay off the Mustangs. Ah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Chester uh, PA Police Department, man, thanks, that's awesome. I love, I love that. And definitely, definitely, definitely support the police officers. Um, you know, even if you get a ticket like I did for probably gonna be 400 bucks, still gotta, still gotta, still gotta respect them. May not be happy about it, but you gotta respect them. What is this? Oh, this is cool. else in there so let's see this is from oh I didn't say who this is from this is from no name so it's on here though thanks for all the content you publish and do us subscribe to your YouTube channel and you have been subscribed for the last several months well I won't always agree on everything designed that Chevy does I don't either uh, I eat a blazer just call a crossover or something else uh, new Camaro design or the new Silverado I hope that this video has helped you with the Silverado I love I my two have said, I'm not too sure about the Silverado, but I really do like the Silverado. Uh, I'll always be a fan regardless. Chevy and racing Chevys is in my blood, and we have had the trophy wall to prove it. Love the trophy wall. Included some key change design I designed up for you. This modern one has my prototype and didn't work for me. The other three larger ones were made of the prototype that uh, didn't look right to me. These are 3D printed with a cannot pronounce the printer um, for you use however you wish. The colors are copper red, pearl blue. I also included a pic of my Chevy 
uh, that I polished up with Adam's polishes and applied to Centennial badges. So this is his Calorado. Oh no, yes, yeah, 100th anniversary Calorado. That's Centennial Blue, love the Centennial Blue. I sold this to one of my coworkers uh, here. So these are the cool Chevy like key tags. I like that, that's cool. Red, blue, gold, can't remember what the other said. So really, really awesome stuff. I do not have a 3D printer. I've thought about one, but I think it would just be a waste of money because I would sit here and just get it and uh, be done with it and never use it again like I do with so many electronics. So this one is coming from a company called Act Fast. This is a fleet accident safety tool. When I got this in my mailbox, I was like, what could this be in here? So whoop, get that out of here. Uh, cleaner environment. Oh, I got some friends who do stuff like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what this is. So, uh, Act Fast Accident Reporting Kit. Um, let's see what's in here. Oh, little camera, pencil, measuring tape, pen, and uh, documentation fact sheet. Those are really cool. I like that. Let's see if there's a note in here. No note. Let's see if there's make sure there's not a note on here. Here we go. There's the note. I knew there was a note in here. Uh, hello, I enjoy watching your YouTube channel. I am seeing five sample kits from my company. We make accident safety kits for trucking companies. This is exactly what I saw. As soon as I saw that, and I saw that padding right there, uh, that is a no-brainer for that, as uh, I was a firefighter, and we had that stuff on our fire rig for this stuff. So I get it completely 100%. This is really, really cool uh, stuff for accident reporting kits for truckers, and uh, truckers are uh, the backbone of our nation even though sometimes they're in the left lane when they're not supposed to be, but uh, they are the backers of our nation to get things done. So uh, I wanna say thanks to everybody here. This is a long 10 minutes after my video, so I really appreciate it. But uh, of course, uh, there's more uh, available to do that. There is more opportunities to win this $100 gift card through the end of the month. Just send something to the P.O. box, which is down in the description below, and I will give you a shout out in the next video. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Hit that subscribe button. Big thumbs up.